Hello and welcome to a tutorial from filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, Chris with a K. Today we're going to be looking at uh, pulling down web information from websites, scraping web pages um, from the shell using curl or wget uh, on both static and dynamic pages. So what does that mean? So when you go to a web page, things load, and it could just be plain HTML, which is great. You just say curl or wget this URL. It gives you all the text, and then you can cut through it. But most of th the time these days, you have JavaScript in action on pages, uh, which may seem a little tricky uh, in some cases for scraping. But really, this is actually better in many ways. First of all, here's my website. Now, my website's actually set up that if you use curl or wget to grab it, it actually leads you to a text space uh, script where you can search through stuff and it gives you directions and stuff like that. But most pages aren't going to be that nice to you. Um, but having a dynamic page with HTML or with JavaScript allows you to do stuff like this. I can type in Linux and it will filter all my videos that say Linux or Bash or Doom. And if we didn't have JavaScript and we just did dynamic pages, you would have to reload that entire page every time and it wouldn't show up as you're typing. You'd have to type and hit enter, wait for the page to reload. So having these dynamic pages, although a lot of people would argue with you, is it's a great thing. It allows you to do so much more. And really, when it comes to web scraping, it makes things easier if the page is designed properly. And in most cases, it will. Today, I'm going to show you examples that I created, which are very basic. Uh, but in the next video, we're going to go to a real life scenario that a friend asked me about. So if you go to filmsbychris.com forward slash scripts forward slash 2020 forward slash scraping, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description of this video, you'll see three files. Now, pretend you don't see this names file because in a real website, you wouldn't see that because you wouldn't have an index like this in most cases. But I have uh, 01 dynamic and 01 static. Let's start with the static page. So we do that. And again, this is a very, very basic example, which makes it very simple for, for scraping. Uh, but scraping can get complex. Um, but here it is. It just shows a list name. But if we look at the HTML, this you can see HTML loads, and then we have div tags, and here's a list of the names, and they all have a class name. This is going to be very, very easy to scrape. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the URL for this. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to my shell, and I'm going to type in. I'll use curl, but you can use wget as well. Wget by default saves it to a file, so you'd have to do dash capital O dash for standard output, where curl does standard output by default. They just do things different ways. Uh, but I do that and I get this. And then again, this is, I can use then type then to grep and grep for name. And then I can say cut dash D uh, for delimiter. I can say this delimiter of the uh, greater than symbol field two. And then I can type it into cut again. And again, there's lots of different ways you can do this. And there's probably uh, cleaner ways with like said or awk, but I'm just typing it through that. And there I got my list of name and that's my command. So that was a static page. Very easy to pull, but then you have to cut through all this. And if they change the design or look of their web page, it could throw your script out of whack because things may be, um, you know, in different places or labeled differently. Uh, plus, this was very easy to grep for name. Or a lot of cases, you might have objects on the page, elements on the page that have names. Then you'd have to figure out. And then lots of times, they'll have the div tags and the stuff will be in between. So instead of just cutting, I'd have to find that, find the line after, then tail out that bottom line. It, it can get very sloppy. Um, let's look at a dynamic page. So I'm going to clear this out. And I'm going to go back to my web browser. I'm going to go back here. And now I'm going to go to the dynamic page. Looks the same, right? But let's look at the code of the page. Ah, see, there's a there's you know just a few lines of JavaScript that requests um, a file, and then it splits it. And I'm doing a very basic text file here. Most cases, you're going to get uh, JSON output, which is great as well, especially if you're looking for something more than just a basic name. And again, we'll look at that more in a realistic scenario in the next video. Uh, but you can see the list names isn't here because this is what the HTML looks like. It's got to run and curl and wget are not going to run that that jo uh, jo uh, JavaScript for you. Uh, there are tools out there. I like using Phantom uh, JS, uh, but there's other ones uh, for Python that will actually render it in a browser for you or an invisible browser sometimes and give you the, the rendered output, which is useful sometimes. But in most cases, it's not needed, and it's a lot simpler. So let's look at this. Again, if we go back to here, 
this dynamic page and I grab the URL and I say curl, I paste in that URL, I get this. Again, doesn't have the list of names. Now I can look at the code here and right away see what's going on. But on a real page, you might have a whole lot of JavaScript and it's hard to go through. You don't have to go through all that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up in my browser. I'm using Brave, which is like a Chrome-based uh, uh, browser. Um, or I guess Chromium-based browser. Uh, but Firefox, same. Uh, almost all web browsers nowadays have a developer's tab or console. Uh, F12 is common to open that. If you don't have an F12 key, uh, like on my Chromebook, Control shift i will open that up. It might be different in other browsers, but you should be able to get a Developer's tab, go to your menu and say Developer's Console or whatever. And then down here, we're going to choose Network. And I'm going to leave this to All at first here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to refresh the page. And you can see some things loading here. Uh, and in certain cases, I'll show you a minute. Uh, well, actually, let's just go back to filmsbychris.com. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to open this up. And notice nothing's loaded because you have to have this open when it's loading, when stuff's loading for it to show up. But if I come in here and I wipe this out and I type in bash, you can see that it's doing requests. And I can click on one of these and see the output of that here. That's the preview. There's the actual output. Let's go back to our basic example here. And again, I'm just passing it plain text and splitting it based on lines. Last sense you'll get JavaScript. Now, again, you'll get lots of stuff loading here, especially if you're typing, you might be loading multiple stuff. One way to narrow this down, most of the time, your data that you're looking for is going to be, unless you're looking for images or some more, there's, you know, something else like this, you're going to want the XHR. You click that and look, it narrows it down. And I can click on this and click preview or response and see, is that the information I'm looking for? Yes, it's the list of names. So all I have to do is click here and say, um, copy address link. And now I can curl that information and I have the list of names. I didn't need to pipe it into grep or cut or anything like that. I got the list of names and that's what I wanted. And a lot of times you'll get JavaScript, in which case you can, or sorry, JSON, in which case you can use JQ, which I've talked about in the past and we'll look at in the next video. Um, but that's it. So we have two scenarios. We have this, which is curl, the URL, grepping, cutting, cutting. And again, that's a very basic example. And if the web page changes, it might break it. Obviously, you know, if they change the back end, things can break too. But lots of times, if they just change the look of the page, they're going to leave their back end scripts the same. And so it'd still be easy to grab that information the other way. So I can have this long command, which really isn't that long, but could be a lot longer. Or I can just have this and get the list of names I want. So instead of scraping, just requesting the information from the website is a lot cleaner and easier and not that hard to find. So again, if you go to a page, if the information loads when the page loads, make sure you have this open and then click refresh. Uh, but in this case, uh, what we can do again is I can clear this out and start typing. Uh, there, so I can type in that and you can see that it gave me one return on that. But right away, I know this is what I'm looking for. There's the information I'm looking for. Um, and again, if I click XHR, that would narrow it down. So if I say all and I refresh this page, you can see lots of stuff's loading. And now I can type in bash. And again, I'm, there's a few things loading here. Obviously, it's these ones here. But on some pages, it might be a little bit harder. XHR. And I can click on this and look at the preview or the response. Is that the information I'm looking for? Right click it and say copy link. Or if, if I just need it the one time, I can just say uh, copy as all as, uh, or not copy all as, but uh, copy as H-A-R. Is there one that's just copy? There's copy all. I guess that would copy everything in that list. I thought there was one that just copied the one that's highlighted. Um, but one more thing to look at here so I can copy this URL and get it. But sometimes um, it's passing post variables or there's session information. And either case, if you're trying to scrape a page that requires a login or some sort of session ID or however you're doing it, you're going to want that information. Well, if you come in here on any of these pages and you say copy as curl, I can paste that in here. It's going to be longer than need be. There's information in this case that's not needed, but it will paste in your cookies, your session ID information, all that in here, and you will get the information that you're looking for. And again, that is great if you have that extra information, but lots of times just right clicking this and saying copy. Well, not lots of times. Lots of times that copy as curl is very useful uh, with the cookies and the session keys and whatnot. Just remember session keys and stuff expire. So 
you use that in a code, that code may not work an hour or a day from now. But if you're just trying to pull stuff down quickly, that is a quick and easy way to do it. Um, what else do I want to mention here? So, yeah, so scraping the page can be sloppy. We're just requesting the information. And there are pages that make this hard. It's rare, but like, for example, like there's Google pages. Like if you try to pull that information from Google, they're, they're, they, they try to hide it. And it's just, in my opinion, horrible programming because you're working harder at trying to hide stuff and now you're adding all this extra code that you don't need but in most websites coming here and grabbing the information you need is super simple um and i have seen and i have done back in the day uh something that's very very poor and ugly is most time when you're requesting information through javascript like this you're going to get properly formatted uh information either plain text like this most time json maybe some xml but occasionally you get a programmer who on the server side generates the HTML and spits that back out to your web browser. Oh, horrible. I used to do that. It's rare you see that occasionally because then now you're pulling the information and you still have to scrape it and it's just sloppy uh, where just requesting that information. And as a programmer, that's, that's not good if you're the programmer doing that because you do that on that side. Then if you want to make a change to the information you got to change it like you want to change the look of the page you got to change that on the server side we're having this constant information uh for example going back to my website filmsidechris.com if i wanted to change the look of this page let me see let me go back here let me go five is that still around no uh, i go six is that still around okay so here's my old web page see i changed the look of it but it's still using if i type in bash the same, look at me walking across, I forgot about that. Um, you can see that I'm still searching through and getting the information here. Um, actually, it looks like on this page, I did exactly what I was talking about. I outputted the HTML instead of plain text stuff. But if I create a new version of my page, I'm going to not change that back end. I'm going to still be requesting, um, let's see, now I'm getting intrigued by my, my old coding. I can still use this link to request that information for my new site. So I can change the way my page looks, but still use this back end and pull the information I want. Where if I was outputting HTML, I'd have to change both my front end and back end. Anyway, that's just a little bit of information if you're designing something. Um, I would advise against generating HTML on the server side, although there are people out there who are going to argue, oh, you should do everything on the server side and output static information. And that may, makes it backwards compatible with computers uh, and operating, I shouldn't say computers because newer computer, or, well, computers from 20 years ago can get new software on it. If you're using Windows 95 or Windows 98, um, you know, they're not going to be recognizing the JavaScript, so you're not gonna be backwards compatible with them. Okay, <laughs> in that case, make your page completely static. Um, I, I, I see more of a concern of being um, forward uh, compatibility. So what I'm doing now is still compatible in the future. You can't always be backwards compatible. It should be a goal, but it's not always a possibility because you're trying to add new features that didn't exist back then. Anyway, I do thank you for watching again. Filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description. If we go to software, we can click here on scripts uh, and then click 2020 scraping and you'll see the code from today. And again, you can see right here the names file, but in most cases, you're not going to have an index like this. Thanks for watching. Please visit uh, filmsbychris.com, link in the description, my Patreon, link in the description, and I hope that you have a great day.